Hello everybody and welcome back to Space Dog. I'm Hojuana and today I'll be breaking down the six different vehicles that made up the RDA whaling fleet in Avatar The Way of Water. This fleet hunted down the highly intelligent Tolkien in order to harvest valuable Amrita, a miraculous material that was capable of entirely halting aging in humans. The first step in the whaling process was finding a pod of Tolkien, a task done by the AT-101 Sea Wasp. This next generation high performance aerial gunship was a major evolution over the 1899 Scorpion, featuring greater speed, range and maneuverability than its ancestor. This was thanks to two features of its design, the first being the overlapping quadrotor layout which provided the craft with unparalleled agility, further improved through the inclusion of wingtip control surfaces. The second major feature of its design was the overall form of the aircraft being more like that of an airplane compared to that of its predecessor. These improved aerodynamics combined with using the exhaust from the powerful turbine engines as pusher jets meant that the Sea Wasp could reach a top speed of 526 km per hour or 284 knots. This made it the fastest rotorcraft ever fielded on Pandora. Along with this incredible speed, each Sea Wasp carried an extraordinary armament for its size, beginning with a chin-mounted 30mm Gao 33K autocannon. They also carried a pair of TK441 rocket pods, a pair of wingtip mounted modular missile pods, four smaller missiles on either side of the cockpit, and hard points for up to 16 Hellfire missiles or 16 Pinger air-launched tracker harpoons. The Sea Wasp was packed with a number of other technological improvements over its forebear, including wraparound and holographic displays for the pilot. The craft's composite skin had a fine honeycomb pattern embedded within it, which added strength to the material and helped it to absorb radar. After a Tolkien pod had been located, high-speed pursuit boats were deployed in order to chase them down, with the vehicle of choice for surface operations in this role being the nearly 10 metre long Picador. These small boats were typically used for short-range patrol or rescue missions, but their exceptional top speed of 107 km per hour or 58 knots made them perfectly suited to pursuing Tolkien. Once they reached a target, they used specialised weapons to isolate the creature and herd it into a kill opportunity, with a preference on mothers with calves as they were slower than the rest of the pod. The Chunker 90mm depth charge grenade launcher used an advanced optical range finding and targeting system to allow its operator to precisely position its depth sensitive smart munitions. When these detonated, they forced the Tolkien to surface to protect their echolocation sensor crests from the deafening underwater concussions. If equipped with one, the Picador could then deploy an AHD-9 sound cannon, a non-lethal crowd control device from Earth that was reconfigured to the frequencies Tolkien were most sensitive to, used to herd the target away from its kin. The subsurface counterpart to the Picador was the MS-3 Type II Mako, a high-speed submersible developed by NWS for coastal harbour defence. It had a relatively high speed for a small underwater vehicle thanks to its hydrodynamic shape and trio of ducted propellers, which were electrically powered by a massive battery array installed in the belly of the vehicle. Makos were also very agile thanks to a combination of foldable dive planes, which doubled as kelp cutters to protect the propellers, and powerful tunnel thrusters mounted all over the vehicle. The submersible's tough polycarbonate canopy, powerful searchlight and 3D holographic display provided the pilot with exceptional visibility and situational awareness. If damaged, the two-person crew could safely escape thanks to a quick purge system and the standard issue setup's breathing masks being able to function underwater. With a top speed of 52 km per hour or 28 knots, the Mako could easily keep pace with its targets, allowing the gunner to accurately target the weak points in the Tolkien's armour plate with lift bag equipped harpoon torpedoes. After a hunt, the craft patrolled the area to ward off aggressive creatures with a combination of high explosive and net torpedoes, as well as a rotary spear gun. After the target Tolkien was forced to surface and successfully isolated, the Matador moved in for the kill. These were designed by RDA to be high-speed command vehicles for the hunt, as well as being the platform for an immense harpoon gun. Their deep V-shaped hull and powerful engine with two water jets gave them a top speed of 74 km per hour or 40 knots, high maneuverability and the capability to switch to full power reverse thrust. Cutting edge navigation, targeting and communications equipment allowed it to safely coordinate the other setup's assets under its command, while military grade shock absorbing seats protected the crew from the worst of the pounding caused by the boat leaping over the waves. The Matador was armed with a trio of 50 caliber hydro machine guns and a 90mm chunker depth charge grenade launcher. 
Its primary weapon for Tolkien hunts was the large prow-mounted harpoon launcher, reloaded using an automatic system immediately behind it. This fired rocket-propelled harpoons into the underside of the target, irrevocably connecting it to the matador with a high tensile cable. The high explosive tip of the harpoon caused fatal internal damage upon impact, and the matador's powerful reversible water jets were used to tire out the dying creature and bring it to a halt, ready for the next stage of the whaling process. This was done by the SMP-2 Crab Suit, a multi-purpose power suit that was custom designed for underwater use. Initially, a water-adapted amplified mobility platform was considered for these tasks, but its humanoid form was not able to meet performance targets. A new design using biomimicry was developed instead, leading to the form of the submersible mobility platform being based on that of the crab. These were dual-mode vehicles, with four legs for mobility on land, which folded up into a more compact shape for the transition to submarine mode, where the large battery-powered ducted propeller on the suit's aft could push it up to a top speed of 35 km per hour or 19 knots. Tunnel thrusters were strategically placed around the carbon fibre carapace to provide control authority when underwater, and the limbs could be deployed to grip onto nearby objects, with the legs each having a pair of toes for this purpose. The two arms on the front of the suit terminated in manipulators that could be configured for a variety of tasks. Its standard loadout was a pair of multiple jointed fingers with a grip force equivalent to three quarters of the bite force of a great white shark. The forearms had mounting points for more equipment such as rotary spear guns similar to those of the Mako, and impact driven anchors used for hauling. Steps in the front legs allowed the pilot to reach the access hatch to the sealed pilot's cabin, which was rated to a depth of 500 meters. Once inside, they used a very similar control system to that of the amp suit, with arms connected to a force feedback armature in front of the pilot, and the suit's legs controlled by foot and knee pads. When in submarine mode, the hand controllers doubled as joysticks, removing the need for a separate control system. Crab suits were used for underwater construction and security at bridgehead, but in the whaling fleet they were used to drive anchors into the armoured hide of their catch, and setting up heavy tow lines to haul it aboard the S-76 Sea Dragon for processing. This large craft was custom designed by General Dynamics for RDA with the sole purpose of hunting Tolkien, with each of them being created in Bridgehead's enormous direct laser deposition 3D printing facility and automated assembly lines. At low speeds, the Sea Dragon operated as a surface vessel with its belly resting on the water. However, once the quartet of ventrally mounted contra-rotating fans brought the vessel up to higher speeds, it rose above the surface on hydrofoils. It then transitioned to ground effect flight, allowing it to reach a maximum speed of 241 km per hour or 130 knots. This gave it the ability to rapidly cover great distances and to keep up with its pair of Sea Wasp escorts, which could land on a helipad to the aft of its pressurised bridge. Each Sea Dragon also had a multitude of facilities for the launch and retrieval of smaller watercraft, starting with a large magnetic ramp to the rear for surface vessels. There were also multiple doors on the vehicle's underside which opened into moon pools for dropping Mako submersibles. The entire nose of the craft could also open up like the mouth of a predatory animal, transforming into a large dock. Each craft had a surprisingly small armament for such a large and important vehicle, with only a handful of MBS 9M 50 caliber Hydro machine gun emplacements, though the crew did carry small arms. Instead, the Sea Dragon relied on its airborne escort and complement of deployable craft for defence. For the purpose of hunting Tolkien, the large vessel merely acted as a tender for the smaller craft that did the actual hunt, carrying them across long distances. After a Tolkien kill was confirmed, the body was prepared by crab suits before being hauled onto the central deck of the Sea Dragon ready for the precious Amrita to be harvested. A medical grade drilling and extraction system entered the mouth of the creature in order to bore up into their brain to extract the golden material, after which the body was unceremoniously returned to the sea. In fact, Amrita was so valuable, shipping it back to Earth had overtaken the extraction of unobtainium as the primary source of funding for all of RDA's operations on Pandora, and the continued expansion of humanity's influence over the Verdant Moon. You can support Space Dock by joining our Patreon, where you can get our Space Fighter design reference book. Alternatively, you can support us directly through YouTube by giving us super thanks or by becoming a channel member. Thanks to our supporters, and thank you for watching.